What is up everybody, Microcosmologist back again with another layout overview video. I'm in the rolling line video game where you can play with model trains in virtual reality like you see. And this is a layout overview video of a layout that I built modeling a layout in real life, the HO scale Cascade Division Great Northern by Lee Marsh as featured in the June 2020 issue of Model Red Rotor Magazine. And I chose to do this layout because I love the Cascade Mountains and this is simply a spectacular layout with a great track plan. The track plan was inspired by Jack Parker's Northern Pacific, featured in Great Model Railroads sometime in the 90s. But the concept is that you have this long main line way in the background that spans the entire length of the layout that just goes in a loop and in the foreground you have a big yard and an engine facility and a bunch of interesting things to do that you could do a bunch of shunting and make up trains and do all sorts of stuff it models the locations of everett as well as Merritt and burn where the cascade tunnel is located in real life although there's no cascade tunnel here yet so this track plan, as you see it right now, is pretty close to Lee's track plan. I actually used a piece of Quick Train from Coconut Pie, which was tremendously helpful. Shout out to Coconut Pie for helping me with the Quick Train. And um, one thing that inspired me to go for it was that all these lovely Empire Builder Great Northern liveries that you see were already available on the Steam Workshop. And uh, the train already existed. All I needed to do was make the layout for it to go on. There's a bunch of beautiful liveries, such as this Great Northern Berkshire, Berkshire by Dark Derby, uh, also known as Hello, um, Welcome Thrill Ho on Steam. And uh, he did a bunch of stuff like this Klondike boxcar right here, which is pretty awesome. And uh, I've got a few of his Evergreen Pacific and Eastern Railroad cars on here as well. And I also want to give a huge shout out to uh, William, aka Terrain Meister, who helped me with this layout, uh, the scenery, the, all the stuff that you see in the yard here that is his work. Um, making the yard look nice and beat up as it would be in real life. This is, I think for me, uh, a step up in terms of the artistic effort, the artistic looks compared to Strawgrass Cascades. I learned a lot. Uh, I used a lot of new terrain pieces, or I guess I, I fooled around with these ones in Strawgrass Cascades, but not to this extent. Uh, you can see how I really went crazy building this mountain here with those pieces, and you can basically just keep copying and pasting them over and over. And just like in the real world of making rock faces, you kind of want to take one pattern and mix it up a bunch of ways so that it's hard to recognize the pattern. And um, I'm really happy with how this layout came out. There's a number of aspects which could still be improved, but overall, um, I'm very happy. First time also uh, really going for that floor to ceiling scenery here, which is awesome. And I'm working on another layout that also incorporates that. But really this layout is fantastic for what I like to do most with trains, which is just simply watching them go around. Um, this upper deck is one long continuous loop on Lee Marsh's HO scale layout. There's actually a helix inside both of these mountains. There's a helix here, and then down the other end, there's a helix inside that mountain where the upper and lower decks connect. But I really hate helixes, helices, whatever the plural form of helixes, um, just because they make your train invisible for such a long period. It's in there doing that big spiral and it doesn't come out for a long time. And for a game like Rolling Line, there's no reason to have a helix. Why not just use a really steep track to connect the upper and lower decks? So that's what I've done. Another thing that uh, I'm really pleased with on this layout is the colors. Are the colors. So the terrain colors, the pine tree colors, I mixed it up. I tried to get away from the default ones. You definitely want to do that, get away from the default rolling line colors, even though they're 
pretty decent. Um, almost always you can find something with a little more personality and a little more cool factor by getting into some custom colors. And I am admittedly not the greatest with colors, so I kind of feel like maybe I just lucked out a little bit. I kind of just fooled around with it until I saw what I liked. Um, and then just didn't stick to one terrain color. You can see how I've got all different sorts of terrain colors all mashed up together. I think that looks nice. I want to play with that idea more in the future. The layout is kind of meant to be viewed from where I'm standing here. This is, you know, where you'd operate it in real life. And I've got these sort of consoles up front for placing trains and doing all that kind of stuff. But one thing I've noticed watching other people play this, this has been out for a while, is that uh, everyone spends a lot of time, you know, back up, like in, in these areas here where you're, you're not really meant to view it from this kind of area. And I've got, you know, some floating things, some, some little not so great uh, areas that I should probably patch up but just never did because, you know, when I was building it, my mindset was always out here looking at it like this. So that's one lesson I learned is, I guess, don't expect that your players will look at it from the vantage point that you're creating layout in mind for. Um, another thing I want to point out that uh, William Trainmeister did that's really great is this tra the, the roads, he made the roads way better than I had them. And also did this really great transition for me pavement to dirt right here, which I think looks great. The yard, the yard overall looks excellent. And um, also this map uh, was my first time using these rust decals. Um, all these, these new scenery features came out, mm, I think, right about the time I started working on this map. And um, also something that's pretty cool is I slammed out this whole map in only four days so it was a real power session I went hard on it but this goes to show you what you can do in a short time frame in rolling line if you really have a goal in mind and you know exactly what it is you want to make and you just go straight for it now that said um, there was probably you know a week or two after it was finished that I went back and did a lot of touch-ups so there's a lot of touch-up that happened after the fact but the big bulk of it, the large majority, was done in about four days' time. And that's, again, thanks to having a track plan that I knew exactly what it was going to make. I had lots of reference images. If you look up Lee Marsh Great Northern on YouTube, you can find some. You can find two videos that are beautiful, beautiful videos showing uh, trains running on the real HO scale layout. There's a couple uh, other liveries here by Dark Derby. We've got the Great Northern Flyer, as well as a gondola, and uh, that tanker car right there. Shout out to Detroit GT, and Dev with the CP, and um, I guess Long with Southern Pacific too. Got a little favorite railroads being represented here in the rolling stock. And there's only one quick mod on this layout and I, I'm not sure if it's actually even in the save but this is a livery that I did for Great Northern Caboose. Felt we needed a caboose and uh, Great Northern has a really awesome livery with the, stri the stripes on the back there. The layout is mostly electrified to be able to run uh, all those Great Northern passenger trains which use electrified engines. We have the V8 version of the, what is it, W1? Someone's going to correct me on this. Uh, the W1, I believe it was, uh, electric engine for the, for the Great Northern, which was super huge, giant, really uh, longer, longer than the V8 actually was. And I have two passenger trains running on the layout. There is... Um, well, in terms of real ones, I guess, I've just got sort of a generic heavyweight Great Northern with this Burke. Looks pretty nice. And then these cars at night are really cool because they're lit up. You do a custom livery, it doesn't light up the passenger cars. That's kind of a bummer. Maybe that will change in the future. And some other things maybe worth pointing out down here. Uh, oh, I guess I also have this tiny little shunter 
electric shunter with the Great Northern livery, and um, hustle muscle in the house. This is also uh, sort of a little version of a commuter passenger train, the Great Northern Ram, called the Cascadian. So baggage, mail car, and one coach, loosely modeled after something you'd see in real life. It would probably be pulled by an F unit like this, though. As a matter of fact, we've got the exact same concepts back here. Uh, if you're looking for which engine you're missing in the uh, roundhouse, it looks like the uh, Evergreen uh, Pacific and Eastern here by Dark Derby was uh, not included in the in the Steam um, Steam content playlist or um, what's the name for the workshop? <laughs> Blanket on the name, but anyway. You see the roundhouse, we improved it. Uh, the initial reviews of the first draft roundhouse didn't come out so nice, so uh, we made it better. I kind of like this detail here of the clear windows. You can see through these windows, it's sort of cool. And then this would be the Empire Builder, pulled by a W1 and two F units. And, um, Let's get crazy, let's go behind the layout. So we're really only meant to view it from this perspective, because in real life, there's a wall behind this whole thing, and there's a pretty big hidden staging yard. I didn't model that staging yard because, I don't know why. You can just put trains on in the front here, but if we go around the back side, you'll see lots of unfinished, um, unpolished terrain pieces here. We do have a few extra little um, loops and operating potentials that I've set up so you can switch between the two tracks. I like the way that um, these concrete retaining walls look. As far as improvements to the track, I could probably loosen up this cross over here. It doesn't need to be this tight. It would look better if it were a little wider on the radius. It's just fun to watch trains on this layout. I really am pleased with the appearance of it, just how it looks, the flow of it. And down here on the other end, I really like this big, long, smooth curve right here. This is sort of one of the tracking, the trackage highlights for me, the way this comes out of the yard and into the back. Um, so let's go around the other side. It is kind of neat to look at it from the wrong side, actually. And I do have a little bit of staging back here and a Big Sky Blue Empire Builder right here, which I'm gonna start up, actually. We're gonna fire this bad boy up once the other one has gone past. Let's just make sure we've got some room. Yep, so the other passenger train is not even in sight yet. Just gonna give it a minute, time this. And uh, I don't really put Easter eggs in my maps. I, I don't know. It seems like the community just passionately loves Easter eggs. I'm kind of all business. I don't know. I just make my layout and not usually hiding a million things in it for fun. But one thing I did add was uh, Trackmeister use only here for the connection between the upper deck and the lower deck. But initially, I did not have these connected. And then I just left my, my own brushes back here if anyone wants to see what I was using. And a cup of coffee. And uh, as you can see, like I said in real life, there'd be a helix here, but I just, I don't know, I didn't want that, so they connect with this steep incline, which is fine for rolling line. Another thing that uh, I figured out in this layout that I really like a lot is putting a piece of um, dark material on your tunnel entrances. So this is just a vertical wall shape with black paint and then opacity. So you can, it's translucent. And that makes it so that when the trains go into it, as you can see right here, there's kind of a shadow that falls over them like it would in real life. So I'm gonna do that every tunnel I make from now on, always. That's, that's a great trick. As well as it serves a function of kind of muting out some of this detail back here that I really didn't fill in. And that's pretty much the layout. 
Again, shout out to Terrain Meister for the assistance with getting this yard looking great, as well as help on the roundhouse and a whole bunch of other mini little small aspects of everything. And uh, Coconut Pie for helping me with the quick train. And um, maybe I might just start a brand new save file right now and show that quick terrain so you can see what I built this on. But before we do that, let's do just a little bit of rail fanning here. Why not? Let's watch some trains. <laughs> Looks like uh, my speed was five and not four. So um, Bert caught up. It stops everything. Great. Not what I wanted. So these guys should be going at a speed of five, I guess. And the Empire Builder on the other side is going to catch up in a little while. There he is. I've totally ruined the spacing. And let me just check this. I could have sworn it was four. Oh, it's five. So this bridge was, you know, a centerpiece of the layout and kind of what got me interested in making it. I love these types of scenes. I've got this great big mountain, big tall pine forest, and a trestle going through it, sort of granite rock faces. This is why I love the Cascades. Steam collection is what I was trying to think of before. So I've got a steam collection with all the liveries you need for this map. That's linked in the item description for the map itself. The only thing that's missing is this one locomotive right there. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to watch this big sky blue. Diesel version of the Empire Builder. I think this would be 1960s. These liveries are again by Doug Derby. Welcome to the Hall of Steam. Nailed that color. There was another version on there that was way too bright and saturated. But I think in Rolling Line you need to sort of desaturate your colors purposely make them a little bit more muted because in-game everything is just like neon highlighter bright it feels like. So anybody out there making liveries, tone down that saturation. Don't need very much. And just to give an idea of the starting point for this layout, let's just start a brand new save. quickest way to do that. I'm just going to go to the main menu and then start a new empty save and then I'm going to show the quick train that was used uh, to build this layout. So let's just do new game, custom table, empty, and then we're just going to expand it a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And quick train, it's loaded in here. So set up Tall Pine Railroad. No, not the Tall Pine Railroad. The Bee Marsh, Great Northern. So this is what I started with. Coconut Pie helped make this. I got the track plan from Model Railroad Magazine, and I just took track pieces and laid them right over the top of this. And this is a great way to mimic a layout that you have the track plan for. Uh, I will say, though, that 
I would only recommend doing this if you really feel strongly that you really want to nail exactly true to the original track plan. Because oftentimes these diagrams are not 100% accurate. And even worse, it's quite difficult to get the scaling right. I scaled this three or four times before finally arriving on the correct scale. And matter of fact, this version that I'm looking at right now might not even be the correct final scale that I used. So scaling, watch out. It's really difficult because the size of everything in rolling line is all goofy. And uh, you're gonna struggle to match up with what it should be. So in any event, I think this pretty much concludes uh, the video. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one, probably at some point, with either the Tall Pine Railroad or the Milwaukee Road Beer Line, both of which are progress, uh, works in progress right now, and just let's, let's give it a tease of that. So the uh, Tall Pine Railroad, this is the quick terrain for Tall Pine, same thing, model railroader. Uh, this one is a lot more inaccurate. I've discovered a lot of problems with this drawing that don't correlate to photographs of the real layout and this is the other half of it i'm going to be doing this too we're going to do both versions tall pine railroad there's a little teaser for you thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed peace out